Hey kids, today we're going to be talking about exponent rules, and that tended to be a little bit of a trouble when we quizzed on it earlier in the year, and on our practice as well, that was also a bit of a trouble, a trouble spot. So let's go over it. Okay, so exponent rules. There are five main exponent rules, and the first exponent rule that we're going to look at is the product rule. Remember, product means multiplication. So it's when you have exponents with similar bases being multiplied together. Notice how they both have an A. In that case, you're going to add, okay? You're adding the exponents together. So your ultimate answer, if you had A squared times A cubed, would give you A to the uh, 2 plus 3, which is A5, A to the fifth power. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Number one, I have uh, negative 2 times 7. I can multiply those numbers together, and I get uh, negative 14. Okay, so I can multiply the negative 2 and negative 7 together. I can multiply the a's together because they have common bases. They both have a's. So I have a, and there's 2 and 2, so I add the 2's, 2 plus 2. And then I can... Uh, multiply the b's together, okay, because they have a common base. Now, when there's not an exponent, we always assume it's a 1. You guys have done a really good job at remembering that. So it's b1 plus 1. And all of that simplifies, I'm getting my pens mixed up, all of that simplifies to negative uh, 14, a, and then 2 plus 2 is to the 4th, b, and then 1 plus 1, is to the second. Okay. Looking at this second one. Okay. Uh, this is scientific notation. So with scientific notation, the way that we're going to factor that is we're going to take the numbers, the 2.6, the 3.4, and multiplying those together. So we have 2.6 times 3.4. And then we're going to take our basis. So in this case, we have 10 squared and 10 to the fourth and multiply those together. Okay. So let me get my calculator. Okay. 2.6 times 3.4 gives me 8.84. Okay. And then just like over here, I kept the A the base the same, the base of the exponent is 10, that's the power, 10 and 10, so I keep that 10, and then I'm going to, uh, since I'm uh, multiplying, add my exponents, 2 plus 4, and so I end up getting 8.84 times 10 to the 6, that's my answer for that. Okay, now we also have the product rule, and, and it, uh, that's incorrectly labeled not only the number, but there's my mistake for those that are counting, there's a two. This is called the power rule. So go ahead and cross that out. Whoopsie. All right, so it's a power rule. And it basically says that when you have an exponent and with uh, a base and an exponent is just raised to a power, what you do is you multiply, okay? So that now is ex the exponents, two times four, which is x to the eight. So you multiply them together. So let's go ahead and look at number three. We have 4x cubed to the second power, and so we're going to multiply those exponents, but also we're going to not forget the 4 that also has to be raised to the second power. So we get so caught up in the exponent rule, we're like 4x, 3 times 2, but don't forget that 4 is also being raised to the exponent. So we have 4 squared, and then we have x and it's 3 times 2. And that simplifies. 4 squared is 16. x to the 6th power. With number 4, I'll go ahead and write that down if you need to. With number 4, we have negative 2 being raised to the 2nd power. Okay. m to the 3rd is being raised to the 2nd, so it's m times 3 times 2. Then we have n squared being raised to the second, so that little 2 multiplied by the 2 on the outside. And let's simplify. 
negative 2 to the second power is the same thing as negative 2 times 2. The negative 2 times negative 2, two negatives make a positive, so that's 4. m, 3 times 2 is 6. n, and then 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? So 4, m to the 6, n to the 4th. Okay? So just a quick recap. When you're multiplying, they call that the product rule. When you're multiplying exponents together, you add them. When you are raising them to a power, you multiply them. But don't forget, if you have a number, you also raise that to a power as well. Rule number three is the quotient rule. And in this situation, when you're um, quotient div division, when you are dividing an exponent, like x to the sixth over x to the second, and they have the same base, they're both x, you subtract them. So that's going to be x to the 6 minus 2, which gives you x to the 4th. Okay? So let's go ahead and look at number 5. With number 5, we have x squared y divided by x. That x squared is raised to the 2nd. We have a y. There's no y in the denominator, so, uh, but there is an x, and that's raised to the 1st power, remember. It's, we don't write the little one there, but it is always there. So we have x, good golly, paper's running away, 2 minus 1, y, which simplifies to x to the first, which we don't have to write that little one, y. Okay? Number 6, a couple, a little more complicated, x to the fourth, y to the third, z to the eighth, being divided by x, y squared, so Remember the little one there in that x. Oh, good golly, that's awful. Hold on, let me try to focus that up. Okay. So we're going to have x to the 4 minus 1, y 3 minus 2, z to the 8. Okay. There's no z in the bottom, so there's no subtraction. Okay. That is x to the 3rd, y to the 1, I don't have to write that, z to the 8th, okay? Again, with the quotient, let me see if I can zoom back out now. With the quotient, you are subtracting. When you're dividing exponents, you subtract, okay? Rule number four, the real rule number four, good golly, hold on, has to do with negative exponents. And so if you have a negative exponent, whether it's in the top or the bottom, you reverse its location. So for example, 1 over a to the negative 3 becomes a third over 1, which is just a third. Okay. Likewise, x to the negative 2 over 1, or x to the negative 2, becomes 1 over x squared. Okay. Let's just pretend it said x to the negative 2 it would be 1 over x squared. The exponent stays positive. When you rewrite it, the exponent's always positive. A lot of people like to put a little minus there, essentially. It's always positive. You just flip its location. If it's on the top, you put it on the bottom. If it's on the bottom, you put it on the top. So let's go ahead and look at number 7. We have 4 divided by 2, which gives us 2. Then we have x. Remember, division, quotient, you subtract. 3 minus 5 gives us 2x to the negative 2. Okay? This tricks people up because what they want to write, I'm going to do this, don't write this down, they want to write 1 over 2x squared. Mm -mm. The 2 stays in its location, but the x goes underneath, the x squared goes underneath, because this is really the same thing as that, but you just need to move that negative part to the bottom. Two's not negative. Leave that alone. Okay? Number eight. I'm going to zoom in. This is awful. We're all out of focus here. Okay, number eight. Good golly. Remember, this is kind of like one half. There's an imaginary one. There, these flies are getting me kids. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do this. This fly is attacking me. Okay, so we have one half. Then x, three minus one. Remember, there's an imaginary 1 there. y, 6, there's a little imaginary 1 there. Minus 1. And uh, z, 6, see, I almost wrote a y because this flies after me. 
6 minus 9. Okay. So what gets to stay at the top of the fraction bar? This is a fraction, the 2's at the bottom, what gets to stay at the top? The 1 gets to stay at the top, x3 minus 1 is x squared, y6 minus 1 is y to the 5th, and then that z ends up being z to the negative 3, and all that's over 2. But this isn't going to fly. We need to move that to the bottom with the 2. It needs to go down there. So we have uh, 1x squared y to the 5th over 2z to the 3rd. Sometimes they won't include the 1. You just have to know it's imaginarily there. So again, only the negative thing, the exponent and its base. 2, like this is not the base. The x is the base of that exponent. The z is the base of that. Only the base and the exponent move um, locations. Okay, and then number five, the zero exponent rule. Okay, this one's relatively easy. You have two x, remember it's the first, and then the first, you subtract. So we have one minus one, which gives us two times x to the zero. Okay, anytime you're raising a number to zero, the answer is one. Okay, it's a mathematical rule. The answer is 1. Okay, so this right down here is the same thing as, where's my pen? There we go. 2, this x becomes a 1. Okay, so it's 2 times 1, which equals 2. Kind of eliminates itself. Okay, number 10. Ooh, we got some steps here. First off, we have to raise some things. 3 squared. We, we always, when we're working with fractions, you treat Treat it as if it's parentheses. The top, you do the top first, you simplify the bottom if you can. And in this case, we can simplify this. 3 squared, 3 times 3 is 9. Then we have x squared, and then a 2. Product uh, power rule, we multiply, so it's x to the 4th. Then we have all that over 2x to the 4th, okay? And then you have 9 over 2 x to the 4 minus 4, which turns into 9 over 2 times x to the 0, which is simplified to 9 over 2. Okay, This fly comes a fly after me, kids. Okay, challenge time. Whew. I'm going to use a gold pen for the challenge. Okay, we need to simplify the top. 7 to the negative 1. Ooh, when you raise a number to a negative 1, what is it? Okay, so we have 7 to the negative 1. Let's rewrite this. x to the 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, all over 2xy. And remember, there's little 1s there, okay? Uh, 2x, okay. Just a fun little trivia. You don't really need to know this. Yet, but when you raise a number to a negative, you it, it now turns into one over seven. Okay, so we're going to rewrite this. It's one. The seven goes on the bottom with the two now, and we have x to the negative three. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at that. We have one seven times two, which is fourteen. So one over fourteen, then x negative 3 minus 1, and then the y. Since the y is positive, but it's still 1 over y, okay? It's still underneath the fraction. Don't move that to the top, okay? A lot of kids want to, therefore, move that to the top, but it, it stays where it's at, okay? So now we have 1 14th, x to the negative 4, y, okay? And what that ends up being is since this is, uh, and, and the y's at the bottom still, this turns into 1 14 x to the fourth y, okay? That little x to the four goes to the bottom, and the y is already on the bottom, okay? So just to kind of, I know that was a little jumbled here, you had 1 over 14 y, and, and then you had x negative 3 minus 1 which gave us x to the 4, but it was negative, so we had to move it to the bottom. All right, kids, take your uh, power test on 
uh, exponent rules.